Hi lovelies and welcome to the summer solstice or litha vlog filled with a lot of midsummer magic. As with all the pagan holidays this year I've decided to celebrate a tiny bit early to share my litha celebration with you, give you some ideas on how to celebrate the summer solstice or how to celebrate litha, inspire you with some midsummer spells and share my own litha ritual. So what can you expect from today's witchy vlog? Well first of all we will hear what litha is all about. I will share a lot of Germanic and Celtic folklore, especially in relations to the custom and traditions and folk witchcraft in my area, southern Germany. We will watch a beautiful summer sunrise together and from that get inspired for some cottage witchery. Later on in the day I'll take you strawberry picking and then we're going to do a little bit of very fancy kitchen witchery for this pagan holiday. We will work our magic and witchcraft around symbols that are dedicated to the summer solstice and in the end of the day I'll take you to one of my favorite and Enchanted little spots to connect with the fairy folk. With that, I want to wish you a beautiful litha celebration. But now, let's watch this magnificent sunrise in the fields. Now Litha is usually celebrated on the day of the summer solstice and this midsummer festivity is actually something that is observed in many cultures around the world still to this day especially in Europe if you go to the Baltics if you go to Scandinavia if you go to Germany you still have those big celebrations it's a prime season for wild herb foraging you have all the blooms and blossoms and all the bees are very much busy pollinating and buzzing around so it's no surprise that the typical symbols of Litha are flat flowers, honey, bees, and so on and so forth. <sighs> My god, why are there so many f bugs? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to spit at you. should wear a mask. No, just kidding. <laughs> It celebrates the start of summer and the end of spring and also of the spring vegetable season. Now it's said to bring bad luck if you're still harvesting asparagus or rhubarb and all these kinds of fruit and veggies. From old Roman scriptures and church documents we still know a lot about the pagan traditions, especially of the Germanic tribes. So after Christianization the summer solstice celebration became the Johannistag. Bonfires are lit or burning, big wheels are rolled down a hill into a body of water to just celebrate the sun and the warmth and the heat. Fire always had this kind of sacred element in itself. So for the summer solstice celebrations people would jump over a bonfire for various reasons. One was of course hand fasting or blessing a marriage, any kind of healing, blessing or wishes for fertility. And here it said as high as you jump as high the wheat will grow. And even some of the folk witchcraft and magical superstitions have held up to this day the Johannes Strauss which is a herb bundle of nine different herbs that will be collected the day of the summer solstice or the day of Johannes and is said to contain magical powers. You will then dry it and burn it at certain times during the year to basically unfold its witchcraft and its magical powers, its healing powers, its blessing and protecting powers. 
I want to share a simple litha spell with you and as a cottage witch I really love to do my spellcraft and witchcraft around the house especially the energies in the house and today I wanted to create something to capture the summer solstice positive strong solar energies that we just soaked up to invite them into our home. So with magical intent I'm making a sun catcher to reflect the sun's bright light and joy to bring it to me and and my house even on dark days, literally speaking as well as metaphorically. And I'm working with different symbolism and elements here. First, I chose to make it in the shape of a moon as the moon obviously holds its very own beauty even in the darkest of nights but we can only see it because the sun lends her light and she shines onto the moon and makes it glow. And I found that to be a very valuable lesson and deeper meaning. Now, in order to really capture in those sun rays, we need a lot of materials that can sparkle, for example, pearls, but you could also use crystals or maybe sea glass you find on the shore or certain rocks you find outside or even little glass splinters anything really that captures in sunlight. And being the green witch that I am, I also wanted to incorporate some herbs that represent and call in a certain magical energies. So I found these cute little bottles and I filled them with different petals. Sunflowers for joy, red roses for happiness and wild roses for that wild optimism. I chose feathers to represent my dreams and wishes for positive thinking fueled by the power and energy of the sun. And then of course I included some personal knickknacks and objects and symbols, just things that give me joy and remind me of what I really enjoy to do in life. We have this cute little camera because I really have fallen in love with making videos on YouTube. And then the key to represent the house and uh, the place that I'm living in now, my grandparents' house and our household and our family. And of course a couple of little other things, sun symbol and so on and so forth. And while I'm crafting this, I'm just trying to really hold that intent and be very mindful of everything and invite everything positive into my life. Do you have any summer solstice rituals or litha spells or rituals planned? Let us know in the comments down below. Yeah, very lecker. Yeah. Yeah. A lovely litha activity or midsummer activity is to go out and experience nature. Now it's strawberry season, so we decided to go out strawberry picking for the day and we can do a little bit of kitchen witchery later on that's very midsummer themed. And I thought it would also be fun to share a little bit of strawberry folklore. The sun is not doing what I wanted to do. It's like two brides making weird shadows on my face. Well, this is better. So in Germanic belief, the strawberry was actually sacred to Freya or Frigg, so the goddess of household, fertility, kids and so on. <coughs> and still in rural... Excuse me. <coughs> Someone ate too many strawberries. <coughs> and still in rural beliefs and traditions, it's very much linked to that. So for example, in the Alpine regions of Germany, Baskets with strawberries will be hung on the cows of the horns in order to make them more fertile. You also have the midsummer tradition of going strawberry picking with your kids. And it is said that if a strawberry falls down, like if a kid drops a strawberry, you have to leave it on the ground because that is sacred to the children that have passed away. Obviously every culture and every country has their own type of fae or type of like otherworldly creatures. And here in the southern region of Germany in Bavaria, we have these women called die Saligen Frauen, white women or blonde women. And they're said to live in caves in all those little grottos. And they are like helpers of rain. So they are the ones that will go around and collect all the fallen strawberries and will bring them to the kids or the children that have passed away to the other realm.
me as the passionate kitchen witch that I am. And of course, I would not let a holiday go past without creating something amazing and spectacular for this summer solstice celebration. So I thought I wanted to combine all the flavor and of course a bit of kitchen witchery and magic and even some symbolism as well. So we are making a delicious sun spiral charlotte cake with elderflower for the bit of fey magic, strawberries for love and lust around this holiday and a bit of basil for protection. Obviously all those flavors also just vibe so well. So first we need to separate the eggs. We just do this in order to make that cake much more fluffier because we first want to start with making a biscuit dough. Now we add some salt to the egg whites and then we whip it. Use that arm, work it out, think of your bikini body that if you flip it around over your head it won't drip on your hair. Now let's add some sugar to the egg yolks and then it too shall be whipped. Now to keep this fluffy fluffy, you wanna sift the flour in. Take a tiny little sift and let it snow. And then we carefully, carefully fold it in. Now we take that egg foam and fold it in as well until everything looks nice and homogenous. Mmm. Now you will need a smaller cake pan and you just oil it or you put a parchment down or you do both. Double is always better. And we want to fill it with about half of the dough. Now the rest goes on a regular baking tray in a rectangle form. And then we pop it both in the oven around 200 degrees Celsius for about 5 to 10 minutes. Don't let it get too brown, otherwise it will break. Now it has tan enough, let's get it out of the oven, flip it around best on a wet towel and in order to remove the parchment without it breaking, you just want to quickly rub that with a cold wet towel. And there we have it, beautiful! Now we're gonna smear that with some wonderful strawberry jam or you can also just puree some strawberries, throw some sugar in and put it on top. It's yummy. Fresh is yummy. Now you can wrap it in aluminium foil and then just pop it in the freezer for a couple of minutes, maybe 20 minutes. In the meantime, free the other part of the dough from its little cage and then we want to add in some basil for that prosperity and abundance magic. Take about 8 to 10 fresh basil leaves and then chop them all small up so it releases all the aroma because basil and strawberry are a match made in heaven. In a tiny bowl we combine the Greek yogurt and of course a bit of lemon zest for those happy summer feels. And now let's just add in those basil leaves and our mixture is already done. In the meantime we want to soak some gelatin sheets. You can also use a vegan alternative for example agar agar or if you have a different way of preparing your gelatin that's fine too. I just soak my sheets for about eight minutes until they're glibbery then I take them out and I will throw them in a slightly heated elderflower syrup and then I just stir until it all solidifies. Now the important part is take it off the stove and then spoon by spoon carefully spoon in that yogurt mixture and then pop it in the fridge for about 20 minutes. In the meantime we have to whip something again. Take some cream, add a tiny bit of sugar and go to town on it. Once that is done and you have really toned your triceps we are now combining the cream with a slightly glibbery yogurt. Make sure it's getting nice and smooth and then we are going to cut our last ingredients, the strawberry. They're just my ultimate childhood favorite fruit. Chop them up in little pieces, add them to the glibber yogurt and then again stir, 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 stir. Your arms will be all so good looking after this. Well, unless you eat a cake, you know. But details, details, small details. Now we need a, a little-ish, mid, middle-ish bowl and cover that with cling film and then we're fetching our rolled up biscuit out of the fridge and cut it in little sun wheels. And actually this spiral in a lot of cultures is the symbol for the sun and that's why I found it so fitting for our litha celebration or litha dessert today. And now you just want to prop it in that little bowl like tight, really tight, like really stuff them in there so there's not much space in between. Between. and then we are just gonna fill our lovely cream in there. Put the lid on top, just stuff it in there and then you want to pop it in the fridge. Best overnight but a couple of hours is fine too. Take it out again, flip it around on a plate or wherever you want to serve it. It's kind of hard to move after you once flipped it around so make a good choice. 
remove the cling film, make it pretty pretty, maybe snap a couple of pictures for Instagram, don't forget to send them to me, and then you can already cut in this amazing slice of summer solstice sunwheel cake. It's so cloudy and so light and so sweet, it just captures the essence of this pagan holiday. Enjoy! You might have heard people say that around Lither the whale is thinning and it basically just means that the border between the here and another realm, whatever that might be, whatever you believe, are not as strict tonight. So there might be portals, there might be doors or there might be options to communicate with spirits, with the Fae, with whatever you think there is there. Now personally I'm agnostic which I don't really do fairies and all that thing. However, I really love me some good folklore and a bit of Celtic and Germanic history. Now depending on and that Germanics had different beliefs about other realms that existed and there are multiple ones actually. But today I want to share the story of the gardens of Holda or Frau Holle with you. Now Holla or Holda or Hulda or Frau Holle or Pechta or Berchta or Frau Wude, which is all the same figure, basically is just a name for the goddess Freya or the goddess Frigg. In a lot of delivered stories she's known as the queen of winter but basically she reigns all year long in different forms. She's this kind of mother goddess or nature goddess or even the personification of nature itself and she has a very ambivalent character like she can be very kind and nurturing but she can also be punishing and, and mean and you know. <laughs> A bit moody, a bit catty sometimes when, you know, when she's not in the mood. What she basically does is to keep mankind in line. She just makes sure that everyone works hard, does their things and is kind to nature. On some important points during the year it said that she is like loose in this world, wandering around the forests and the fields and the villages. But for most of the time she lives in her own cottage that has this big garden orchard. And there is a way that sometimes people can find her there. And there are different portals that are said to get to her. So you have wells, way crossings, lakes and a very important one, the elder tree. In shamanic belief the elder tree was even the personification of Hulda. In Bavarian it's called the Hollerbusch. But I've spoken about this more in other videos so I won't bore you with a recap. A lot of modern witches nowadays when they refer to the Fae they usually mean the Celtic inspired or English inspired Fae and around Lither it's custom to bring like little honey cakes and whatnot. In Germany there are different customs and one was to offer the elder tree a bit of beer or milk or alcohol for Hulda and her helpers. So what are Hulda's helpers or Frau Holle's helpers? Because that's actually the German type of fae. In German folklore there are not as many pixies or fairies as in for example England. So the mountain regions typically have more stories around the giants. But where I live it's mostly dwarves or certain types of women. So most of our fair folk is actually ladies that rule a certain element or that rule a certain area in nature. Weissenfrauen or the Wasserfrauen, Wiesenfrauen, the Waldfrau. And I find this a lovely insight into those ancient cultures that were so bond to nature because every time you harm that certain part of nature that nature spirit will actually punish you. But now let's talk about what Frau Holle is in charge of. So she has an entire army of little dwarf-like creatures. Again they're mostly female depending on region they will be referred to as Moosweibler or Waldweibler or where I live is called the Lowweibler and they're said to be little tiny creatures. Sometimes they're like covered with moss and other stories. They're like friendly old little women that will help the humans and they're very skilled in herbs and tinctures. They live in the forest, they basically hide. There are many many stories and little poems you tell kids if they ever meet one of those forest spirits they have to be kind in order to receive help and since Frau Holle is also the goddess or the protector of the Heimchen which are the unborn souls and they also are said to live in Holle so what I want to do now is just sit here and leave a tiny little offering a traditional Holle drink and I just want to soak up the last of the summer solstice sun and think about all the things I'm really grateful for with that I just leave also my offering to nature and a nature spirits because this is what has kept me sane throughout this entire year I have to say. I was lost 
dust in the woods on the dust and the fairies found me and they led the way they clear the way to my heart all the hurt all the pain under the skin I had fainted and they carried me they clear the way to my heart thank you It was super nice that you followed along. I hope you have a wonderful litter celebration or a summer solstice and I see you very soon. Goodbye!